Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we'll take a look at raster file formats. Some of the topics we'll focus on include lossy versus lossless compression, as well as some of the pros and cons of the different file formats. So before we start talking about raster graphics, it's important to note that all of the file formats I talk about in this video will work on both a Mac and a PC platform. Every now and then I get a student who's working in one of our Mac computer labs and they'll be editing an image in Photoshop and save it and then they'll want to take it home and work with it on their PC at home but they're not sure if that'll work. And the short answer is yes, that will work. The whole point of the file formats we use nowadays is their versatility and part of that versatility is they will work on either platform. So whether you're editing or viewing the image on a Mac or a PC, it won't make a difference. So don't worry about computer platforms moving forward. Now the different types of file formats have different types of compression. Uh, the two compression types are lossy and lossless. So a lossy compression type sacrifices some of the image quality in order to reduce the file size. So the downside of a lossy file compression is sacrifice of image quality. The upside is you have much smaller file sizes. This is compared to lossless compression, where there is no loss of image quality. And even though the compression will reduce the file size slightly, the ending file size is still pretty large compared to a lossy compression format. So this brings up a topic I've talked about in other videos, and that's the fundamental problem of multimedia, which is balancing asset quality with file size. So here you see a very clear choice for multimedia developers where they have to choose between a high quality image with large file size or sacrifice a little bit of image quality in order to get a smaller file size for their project. As multimedia developers, you're going to have to start making these choices as well, choosing between lossy and lossless files based on your needs. So let's take a look at some of the file formats. First, we'll look at the lossless formats. Um, there's two of them, and that's the TIFF and the TGA format. The TIFF, or the Tagged Image File Format, is great for photographers. Again, it's a very deep, rich, colorful image, um, very high quality image. And photographers, they don't care about file size that much. They want the, the best quality image they can get because they tend to print their images for show in galleries or portfolios. If they're going to put their images on the internet, they tend to use a lossy format. So the other lossless format you can choose is the TGA or the Targa format. This too is popular with photographers, but what it adds that the TIFF lacks is an alpha channel. So you can put a little bit of transparency in your photos if you use the TGA format. So those are the two lossless formats. Let's take a look at some of the lossy formats. So there are three major lossy formats. There are others, but these are the ones we use the most and that's the JPEG, GIF, and PNG. So the JPEG, or the Joint Photographic Experts Group, was designed by photography experts, so it's no shock that this format is really good for rich web-based graphics, in other words, photos that we want to put on the internet. Um, one of the downsides of the JPEG is there is no alpha channel, so you get no transparency with this image format. Now the second format, the GIF, which stands for Graphics Interchange Format, um, does have an alpha channel, so it does support transparency. But unlike the JPEG, it only supports 256 colors, or 8-bit color. Um, so GIFs tend to be much simpler graphics color-wise. They tend to be a little bit more cartoony, whereas JPEGs tend to be more photorealistic images, just because of the color palettes they support. Um, one added bonus of the GIF format is that you can make animated GIFs. Now animated GIFs aren't the highest quality animations that you can make nowadays, but it is a nice bonus for that format. The third format is the PNG, which is the Portable Network Graphic. So it adds the alpha channel just like the GIF does, but one of its benefits is it stores greater than 256 colors. So you can have a photorealistic image with transparency in your PNG format. Now the PNG doesn't store photographs as well as the JPEG does. That's what the JPEG was designed for, um, but it does a pretty darn good job. It comes pretty close. 
So these are the three lossy formats, and we'll be using these formats a lot this semester because most of the graphics we're making as multimedia developers are designed to be shared over the internet. So file size is a big concern for us. Um, so which format are we going to choose? Again, for web-based media, we want lossy compression, so JPEG, GIF, PNG. These are the ones we like. If you are a photographer and you want to print your work, then you're probably going to use a lossless compression because you don't want to lose any of your image quality, but you still need to think about file size because your USB drive is only going to store so many images. So you'll go with a TIFF or a TGA. That's it for this lecture. See you in the next one.